Hi everyone, this is Emily Leapart here for Tailored Expressions, and in today's video I'm sharing projects using the Diamond Botanical Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies from the Spring Easter release. As part of this release, the Coordinating Diamond Masking Stencils will also be sold separately. This was the December 2020 freebie with purchases over $100, and you can go back and watch my video for additional ideas on using that product. I love it when old and new products work together for even more versatility. I've always loved diamond frames, and this new stamp set with the gorgeous botanicals is sure to become a new favorite, plus it's so easy to use. In this video, I'll be sharing three ways to use this stamp set, plus its coordinating dies and stencils. You can definitely get a variety of different looks simply by changing the layers, using only one part of the die or not at all. Whether you color it or leave it simply stamped, it's a stunning image. Plus, I love sentiments that are a combination of script and classic font, and these words also cover a wide range of occasions, which makes it a must-have. To start, I'll be stamping the image several times using Oreo ink and once using sea salt ink. I'll prepare all of my stamped images at once, so I can create three cards using the same colors but for three completely different looks. I start by placing a panel of sugar cube cardstock in my mini Misty, and centering the image by making sure the points of the diamond line up with the grid. I ink it up twice and stamp it using Oreo ink. The coordinating die for the image comes with two pieces and is attached when you purchase it. If you don't snip the two pieces apart, you can die cut the full frame by using it exactly as is. If you snip it apart, you can either cut out just the diamond in the center or the outline of the entire image without a hollow center. For this first shaker card, I want to use the die as is to create a full popped up frame. I also want to shift the image and stamp the botanicals again in a lighter color in the background for a layered look. I shift my stamp so it's angled and then ink it up with sea salt ink on a fresh piece of sugar cube cardstock and stamp it. Isn't this frame absolutely stunning when die cut? I even love it as is, just in black and white. When I layer the frame over the background, I want to make sure that the flowers are not the same in both directions. The flowers and leaves are not symmetrical at both ends of the diamond, so this gives it better coverage and some variation. Now I'll put on some music and color the images. I'll be using my Copic markers and speeding through the process 20 times. I chose a bright color combination and not necessarily one that occurs in real life. I'm over this dreary winter and so ready for spring. just love this one so much and can't wait to turn it into a shaker. For my next design, I'm going to layer several stencils. I attach the panel to my grid mat using a rolled up piece of washi tape. Then I center the larger of the two rectangle masking stencils. Over top of that, I tape down the candy cane stripe mini slim stencil. I'll be using this stencil to create rays pointing at the diamond. I'll start with candy corn ink and the coordinating blender brush. Then I add pumpkin ink to darken the outermost corners. I remove the stencil, wipe it down completely, and clean up the edge of the rectangle stencil to make sure there's no cross-contamination of ink colors. I flip the stencil 180 degrees on its vertical axis so that the stripes are in the opposite direction. Then I use Cookie Monster ink and the coordinating blender brush on the other two corners. I add Poblano Pepper ink to darken those two corners. I remove both stencils and absolutely love how this looks. The question was whether I add more rays on the inside of the diamond, and yes, I decided to go crazy with it. Of course you could leave this as is because it already has that wow factor. This is where the diamond masking stencil comes in. This is the smaller of the two, and I attach that to the grid map before layering the candy cane stripe stencil on top. I line it up with the previously inked lines, and this time I'll only use candy corn very lightly and on the very edges of the diamond stencil. I'll repeat this process with Cookie Monster ink on the remaining two edges. When I remove the stencil, you can see how the lines continue inward, but not completely over top of the stamped botanicals. 
It's almost like an optical illusion. Here are my three finished panels. Now I'll prepare to stamp the sentiments on each of these. For the shaker, since the base has an off-kilter image and the diamond isn't straight, I will use the frame as a guide for the stamping. I use pencil and draw the area where the sentiment will be stamped. I place it in the misty and stamp birthday wishes. For the stenciled rays, I stamp hello. And for the last card, I stamp thinking of you. Then I use just the outside die for the diamond botanical image and die cut that from acetate. I use score tape to adhere it to the back of the window. Before assembling the shaker card, I erase the pencil lines. Before attaching the window, I need to make sure that the botanicals are in the right direction, meaning the opposite direction from the image that I stamped on the panel using sea salt ink. Then I use foam sticky strips to build the walls that will house the glitter for the shaker element. Before assembling the shaker, I trim down the panel by an eighth of an inch on all sides and attach it to a pumpkin card base. I attach the panel and sprinkle glitter in the center of the window area. For my second card, I trimmed only the top and bottom of the panel by an eighth of an inch and attached it to a Pablo No Pepper card base. I left this card as a flat, easy to mail design. I want to do partial die cutting on my last card to give it some visual interest. I secure the die to the image with removable tape. Then I use mini cutting plates to only cover the portion of the die I want to cut and run it through my Big Shot. I want to cut the edges of the botanicals and avoid the middle of the image, specifically the straight sides of the diamond. I carefully position the panel and make sure that no edges are hanging off the main cutting platform when it goes through the die cutting machine. I will do this very carefully several times until all of the botanical edges have been die cut. Here's how the panel looks when the partial die cutting is complete. I add foam tape to the back of the botanicals so that the edges will pop up slightly. I use score tape on the rest of the panel to make sure it's secure on the card base. Then I use a jewel picker to add some clear drops and I have a funny story about this card. I had it sitting in a basket by the door and when my husband came in from shoveling the snow he saw it and had a little heart attack because he thought he got my card wet and was afraid of how much trouble he'd get into because he ruined my card. Long story short, these clear drops look like real water droplets. So here are all three of my cards. The first one is a shaker and it also uses both parts of the diamond botanical die to create a window frame for the glitter. It has the offset stamping in the background and I think anyone would be delighted to receive this on their birthday. My second card, or rather third card completed, has the cool stenciled rays and partial die cutting. I didn't color the botanicals here and it still makes an impact with all the other elements. The last card is straightforward stamping and coloring with no embellishments or die cutting to show that you can just use the stamp set without the die. There are still so many ways to use the diamond botanical stamp set coordinating die and stencils and I hope you're inspired to create with them. Please let me know in the comments below which card design is your favorite. You can find all of these products in the Tailored Expressions web store at tailoredexpressions.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.